In this video, we're going to be breaking it all down with the cost of living from Escobedo to Valley Center. What's the difference? Housing, taxes, utilities, and the food. Really, does it make sense to go to Escobedo or does it make more sense to go spend the money in Valley Center? All about the cost of living and we're getting after it right now. What's up, amazing people? I am Liz LaFora here with the Mortgage List team located out of San Diego, California. And on this channel, all we talk about is what it's like to eat, live, sleep, and play here in San Diego, California. And if this is what you're looking for, you definitely want to hit that subscribe button and tap that little bell so you're reminded every single time we release a new video because honestly, we do it every single week. And honestly, my team and I are receiving phone calls every single day with people just like you thinking about moving to San Diego, whether it's moving to a different part of San Diego or coming from a different state. And if you're thinking about making that move, you definitely want to reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text or an email, whatever is easiest for you, because definitely we got your back when moving to San Diego. Now, let's get after the breakdown of Escondido versus Valley Center and the true cost of living. All right. So both of these cities are located in California and in the county of San Diego. So we are clearly aware that the sunshine tax definitely applies to both of these cities. So of course, they're not going to be on the most affordable list. However, they are one of the most economically affordable lists when it comes to San Diego. And so with the difference of the breakdown from Escondido to Valley Center, you will find some things that may be better in Valley Center, some things that may be better in Escondido. Okay, so let's first compare the population of the two cities. So when it comes to Valley Center, you're looking about 9,842 people were living in Valley Center back in 2010. As of now, we're looking at a 9.1% increase to a little shy of 11,000 people living in Valley Center. Well, in Escondido, it's completely different population. We are talking about 151,000 plus people living in Escondido. So you will notice that Valley Center is more of a smaller town in comparison to Escondido. And both these cities come with some amazing benefits. The beaches, the city, San Diego, and all within about a 20 to 30 minute driving distance. So we're gonna go a little bit more into deep dive about that, but it's really nice to have both these cities local and affordable in San Diego and still be about 20 to 30 minutes from that beach. And depending on which beach you want to go to, there's over 30 beaches here in San Diego. Okay, so first on our list is going to be home prices. So housing. When it comes to San Diego, you're going to be looking at a housing home price about $645,300. That's going to be the average for San Diego. However, when you look at Escondido, you're going to be looking at a home roughly about $527,600. That is in Escondido. But when you start looking at Valley Center, Valley Center, again, country living, you're going to be looking at homes at about $611,600. So, of course, you're going to notice that difference from the $527 to the $611, but there's a lot more that comes into those housing prices that we're going to definitely be discussing. So I'm sure you're aware that housing in general has been climbing since the COVID environment. So since 2020, it has been going up and it is steadily going to keep increasing about four to 8%, depending on the economist that you're listening to. As to it going downward, you're gonna find that it's not going to go backwards. So there is no bubble. So we're gonna be talking about those later in a different videos, but just want you to be aware that right now in general, when it comes to Valley Center, you're looking at home prices right in the middle 600,000. Then it comes to Escondido, you're looking at right in the middle of 500,000. So let's talk about the differences of what has happened in the last year and how home prices are now affecting new houses here in these two cities. So when it comes to Escondido in the last year, you will have noticed that definitely it's a seller's market. There's not enough sellers to offset the amount of buyers that are trying to really take advantage of these interest rates. So in Escondido, you're gonna find that homes actually do sell pretty fast and with multiple offers. So you're typically gonna find an Escondido home that has on average about six offers and typically doesn't even stay on the market for about 13 days. Um, but that says based off of Zillow, based off of Redfin, that that is the average a home is actually on the market. Keep in mind that a lot of the time when a home is available for a new buyer, it typically already has 10 to 20, even sometimes 30 offers 
really waiting for them within 24 hours. So when it comes to Escondido, you're gonna find home prices on an uptick. It's obviously they're inclining and they're going up because of what's been happening in our low rate environment, seller demand, buyer demand with not enough sellers. And so with that, Escondido home prices have gone up about 8.1% in the last year. The average home price in San Diego based off of Zillow and Redfin is showing right about $690,000 which is about 8.7% up from last year. And then homes are also selling for about 3% higher than what the list price is. So if you look at a home at about $500,000, 3% on top of 500,000 is gonna be about $515,000. And they also are selling within about six days. So what used to be 13 days has now gone down to about six days. And remember what I said before, it's even less than that in some cases. And then in Escondido, again, home prices are still going up. So we're looking at home prices at about $598,785, going up about 11.8% in the last year. Zillow says that they're expecting an increase just in Escondido for about 11.5%. So again, that's going to be another dramatic increase over the year. But again, offsetting, you have your lower interest rates, which is actually lowering the monthly payment, even though the home prices are a little bit higher. Valley Center is at a whopping 18.7% increase over last year. And Zillow is also estimating that the home prices in Valley Center will continue to rise about 4 to 5%. So remember what I was saying before, bubble. Is there a bubble? No, there is not a bubble. It's very different. Again, another video for another day, but just wanna make sure that you're aware when you look at Valley Center and you look at Escondido, they are definitely different home prices, but there are definitely different types of living. In comparing the two cities, you were finding that Escondido was selling fast, right? Six to 13 days, really quick, being able to get in and per se, getting out and getting your keys. Valley Center is not the same. Valley Center, a home will sit for a little bit longer, not a lot longer, but 27 days. And so it will take a little bit longer to sell a home in Valley Center, which technically gives you a little bit more time to look around in Valley Center and find the best neighborhood for you. Because whereas Escondido, home prices, you're talking like three to six days is all the time you have to decide which home price and which area, Valley Center is gonna give you 27 days. So it just gives you kind of a way to figure out how much time you have before that home is going to get sold to a new buyer that writes an offer or one of 30 offers on that home. And in Escondido, we were talking about home prices are getting sold for about 3% higher than what they're actually listed for. So remember that 500,000 to the 515 amount, what I was talking about, differences in a Valley Center, you're looking at a 1% above the list price. So the home is actually listed for $700,000. 1% above that is about $707,000. So it just kind of gives you a rough estimate as to where you would be at when it comes to the sales price at the final day at your accepted offer moment. So depending on where you wanna live, whether it's Valley Center or Escondido, you're gonna be looking at which one is more affordable or more for you. Okay, so now let's talk about renting inside of that housing. All right, so renting in general, when it comes to Escondido, you're gonna find about 48.5% of the people that live in Escondido are renting. And so when it comes to a three bedroom and a four bedroom, they're gonna be a little bit more affordable than you're going to find in Valley Center. So where 48.5% of the population in Escondido end up being part of renters in Valley Center, it's a bit lower at 14.4% in Valley Center. But remember that in Valley Center, we're talking about a population at about 11,000. In Escondido, we're at a population at 151,000. So that is definitely a significant difference. So if you're looking for renting in Escondido, you're gonna be looking at a three bedroom at $2,180. For a four bedroom, you're gonna be looking at $2,670. So for the three bedroom, it's gonna be $2,458 in Valley Center, and then a four bedroom is going to be $3,018. So you will see that you'll end up spending a little bit more in rent in Valley Center than you will in Escondido. The big difference though, is that in Valley Center, you're gonna get land. So meaning that you're gonna get a big backyard or a big front yard, or you're just gonna get acres. That's not as commonly found here in Escondido. So part of that rent that you're gonna be paying for in Valley Center is gonna be going to the land that you're getting to be able to live there for the rent purposes. 
So on to number two, and that's gonna be the utilities. So in the utilities, it's gonna also come along with the weather. So in the weather, you're gonna find that Valley Center is gonna be a bit hotter than Escondido. So that's also going to be part of those utilities. So depending on your home, you may end up one, having a pool, two, definitely probably having an AC, um, and you're gonna be running that a lot more often. So depending again, where in Escondido you live, or depending where you are in Valley Center, you'll end up finding that the utilities in Valley Center are gonna be more expensive. So to give you some rough numbers, when it comes to utilities, so we are all connected to San Diego Gas and Electric. So we have the gas and the electric all in that one bill. So typically, depending again, based off of the pool or the fact that you run the AC or how often you run the AC and, and the heater, um, will depend on how expensive this is. However, when it comes to that average bill before we got solar, comparing those numbers, you were looking at about $250 to $350 a month just for SDG&E. One thing to keep in mind though is that because of SDG&E, you have the ability of doing the six month Equipay, which means that they will average your six months of bills and that'll be your next six months, same monthly payment for those following six months. Um, and that can be done in Valley Center and in Escondido. And depending on where and what time of the month, and depending on what time of the year, the gas and electric can get really expensive, um, especially when we're talking about June, July, and August, which are technically the hottest months when it comes to both Escondido and Valley Center. So if you're gonna go up the grade, it's gonna be a little bit hotter than it is on the bottom of the hill. So the gas and electric, about the $250 to $350 a month, again, depending on how much you use it. And then you have your water. So your water is typically connected to, in Escondido, it's gonna be the city of Escondido, water and garbage. And then in Valley Center, of course, that's connected to Valley Center. Um, depending on how much water you use, of course, it can be more expensive, but on average, you're looking at about $80 to $150. I know that now that it's getting hotter, we are using a bit more water from the evaporation of our pool, so therefore, um, um, it's going to have to get refilled just a little bit more and therefore the bill for the water for a city of Escondido is going up just a little bit. But when you're comparing that bill, it's going to be right about the $100, $125 range. So on utilities, let's talk about solar. So it's actually really common that you have solar on your home that you're trying to buy. Um, it's actually pretty common as much as 80% of Californians actually have solar. So odds are you're probably going to either take on a solar agreement, whether it's a lease that you're um, now taking over, or in one of my client's cases, he's actually taking over two leases. So um, with that solar, it's going to end up overall actually decreasing the actual bills that you have. So the gas and electric bill. One thing to remember is that when you do have solar, depending on one, when it was built, two, when it was installed, and three, how much overbuilt it was actually done will depend on how low your gas and electric bill is. So why do I say that? Well, a lot of time when solar was originally being put in, it was just being the cost effective one, vice versus the being the one that makes the most sense, the one that's going to last you the longest. Um, and then when you start looking at the solar, you want to make sure that you've actually overbuilt your solar. So what does that mean? Well. When we first have here in California and here in San Diego and Escondido and Valley Center, um, solar, you end up wanting to turn everything back on. I mean, so you have all the lights, all of the um, <laughs> heater and the AC is always running, um, you're running the pool, all of these extra things that you were not doing before you got solar. So before you got solar, you were very conscious. You wanted to make sure that you were staying in your budget. And then we get solar and we're like, oh yes, now we can actually turn everything on and we can use it more often. The problem is that solar is actually set up based off of a 12 month schedule. So I'm showing how much actual electricity you had used in the last 12 months. So when you don't overbuild your solar, you end up having additional bills. So where you thought you were actually going to eliminate your gas and electric bill, no longer you actually gonna eliminate because now you're using extra power, extra gas, extra electric, which is going to then give you a bill where you thought was gonna be zeroed out. So even when you do have solar, you're always gonna have at least like an $11 bill, which is just kind of a maintenance bill that comes out from sending gas and electric. So just remember that when you do buy that solar, it is pretty common that you're actually able to transfer it over to yourself. Sometimes you have to be able to qualify, sometimes you don't have to be able to qualify. That's a whole nother conversation for another video. So on to transportation, which is number three. 
So transportation in Escondido and Valley Center in general, also in San Diego County, is going to be kind of a must. Over 80% of people actually have a car in San Diego, and so there's going to be a lot of driving. And so let's compare the two cities. In Escondido, again, population is about 151,000 plus, so it is actually pretty common that you're going to have a car. Um, in getting from where we are on one side of the town just to get to the other side of the town, um, it's going to be about 15 minutes. Remember how big Escondido is. And so it's going to take a little bit longer to get into town and all the way across town. And you're definitely not going to be wanting to walk that. So let's compare that to Valley Center. Valley Center, again, is more of a country style living. So country style living, you're not gonna have a lot of walking. In reality, you're actually gonna probably find a lot more horses that are walking for you and you're just riding your horses. That is actually gonna be more common that you're gonna be finding in Valley Center. So if you buy in Valley Center, you're definitely gonna want a car. If you're in Escondido, you're definitely gonna want a car. Odds are you are not going to walk to the park even though it's technically around the corner. Okay, so how far are you from the actual freeway? So when it comes to Valley Center, so technically in Valley Center, you actually have to pass through Escondido to get to the 15 and the 78. And so when it comes to Escondido, you could technically take East Valley Parkway all the way down to get to the 15 freeway. Um, or you can go to the left or to the right and end up either on the 15 or the 78. Um, but when it comes to Valley Center, you actually have to go down the hill to be able to get into Escondido to get all the way to the freeway. So from Valley Center, you're going to be looking just to get down the hill and then technically depending on where in Valley Center is. Remember that Valley Center is country living. So you could be right at the top of the hill or you could be miles inside of Valley Center and it could take you 5, 10, 15 minutes just to get to the hill that is right before Escondido. So that's say there about 10 to 15 minutes just to get to that spot. And then from Escondido on the border of Escondido and Valley Center, from there to the freeway, you're gonna be looking at about 15 to 20 minutes. And depending on what time you are in your car and getting to that freeway, it's gonna be a bit more traffic. And depending on which direction you're going, whether there's school and almost every direction from Valley Center down into Escondido, you're going to hit some kind of school. And depending on whether you're actually traveling from Escondido into East Valley Park, but you're gonna pass Orange Glen Elementary, you're gonna come down, go to Bear Valley, you're gonna pass Orange Glen High School, um, you're gonna keep going, you're gonna end up passing LR Green, San Pasquale High School. These are all schools that you're going to pass that are going to cause you traffic. So anywhere between 7.30 and nine o'clock, you're gonna be sitting there for a little while. So you're gonna be sitting about in Valley Center from coming from Valley Center to the freeway about 30 to 40 minutes. Um, the reason why I bring this up is that it is actually really common to live in Valley Center, have the country life, and then just travel through Escondido and come to Escondido grocery stores and things like that because there is not that much of that sorts of stuff in Valley Center. So now let's talk about gas prices. In gas prices in Escondido, you're gonna be looking at about 289 to 359. Valley Center is going to be a bit more expensive. Remember, country living, rural, so therefore there is not that many gas stations. Where in Escondido, there is multiple ones and you're pretty much going to find one almost on every corner, or every other corner. Valley Center is not that case. There's only three gas stations in Valley Center. And so, of course, gas prices are going to be a bit more expensive in Valley Center. So at 309 to 353 for gas prices per gallon in Valley Center, national average is actually at $2.89. So you're gonna end up finding that if you do not wait to get gas in Escondido before you go up the grade or when you're coming back down the grade, um, you're definitely gonna want to not fill up as much in Valley Center just because gas prices are a bit more expensive. So how long will a tank of gas typically last you? Well, here in my car, um, for my Yukon XL, yes, it's kind of a bigger car. Um, we like to play softball here and we wanna make sure that we have enough room for all of that softball gear. So that car or that GMC actually ends up having about, I think it's like 25 or 27 gallon tank. Um, that will typically last on a regular non-COVID week, um, about just a week. Um, when you fill up, it's about $80, and then depending on how expensive gas prices are that week, it can get to about $90 to $100 for the 27-gallon tank. However, during this pandemic, we're not going to a lot of places, and also everything is kind of closed, and my kids are also homeschooling. So 
With all of that, um, the gas tank actually right now lasts closer to like two or three weeks. Um, so it's not going to be as expensive right now, but uh, just keep in mind that, you know, things obviously are going to reopen. And when they do reopen, you're going to end up spending a little bit more gas um, in your car. And so depending on where you decide to live, whether it's Valley Center or Escondido, um, you're going to want to take that into note. And on to number four, and that's the cost of food. So this is where it gets kind of interesting. So when it comes to the cost of food um, in Valley Center, honestly, there is not a lot of restaurants. Um, there is a lot of casinos, and so typically you'll end up actually buying food or eating at the casinos is typically what's pretty customary um, because there isn't a lot of restaurants at all. I mean, um, when I was looking up on Yelp, I was actually only finding a couple of them, and the ones that I did find, um, honestly, I wouldn't go to. Um, they just were not, did not have the best reviews. The food honestly didn't look that great. Um, and so there's only a couple spots that we'd actually eat at. So in Valley Center, there's 10 restaurants total in Valley Center. And like I said, there's only two that we would actually go to. First one is going to be Porfinos, which is in the middle of town of Valley Center. Of course, you're going to have to go up the hill, down the hill to be able to get there. But that's one of two, one of two that you want to try out. And the next one you're going to want to try out is going to be the Yellow Deli. My husband loves this spot. It is out there though. So you're going to travel literally going from Escondido up the hill to Valley Center, down into Valley Center, um, and you're going to be in there about 20 minutes before you get to the Yellow Deli. However, my husband says that their sandwiches are, are absolutely to die for. So you definitely want to try that if you end up buying in Valley Center. So now let's talk about the cost of food when it comes to Escondido. Well, in Escondido, obviously, again, 151,000 people live in the population of Escondido. And so technically, there's a lot of food spots. And I mean, when it comes to Mexican food, there's pretty much one like almost on every single corner. And then you have Stone Brewery, then you have Cocina del Charro, which again is a Mexican spot, but more so kind of like a sit down spot. There's a whole bunch of other restaurants on the east side of town and west side of town. Um, there's also Grand Avenue where you will find a whole bunch of yummy spots like Burger Bench and Felipe's Pizza. Um, definitely some spots that you want to um, try out. One thing that you will definitely find out when it comes to the cost of food is that it can really get expensive. Um, when it comes to cost per person, you're going to be looking at about $15 per person. But with myself, my husband, and my two kids, we're definitely not going to be walking out of there with $60 bill. So typically, you're going to have the appetizer, let's say it's nachos or something like that. Then you have your actual meal. Then you got your drinks. Let's not forget about those strawberry lemonades for my daughters. And of course, you got to have dessert. So by that point, you're looking at about $100 before you even tip. And of course, you got to tip all of the waiters that are here in Escondido and then just technically anywhere. Um, but it's really important that when you look at the different places of kind of what is bringing you to that part of the city, whether it's Escondido or it's Valley Center, really country living you're going to get in that Valley Center. You're not going to get as much restaurants, so technically you'll be saving there. But also in Valley Center, you're going to find a lot of people that are actually raising things, raising um, pigs and um, and raising pigs and cows and things like that so um and then of course all of the fresh fruit and vegetables you're definitely going to find that up there um so that's actually going to be really common in general um of course they also have the farm market which happens in valley center as well as a farm market that happens in escondido so getting fresh fruit and vegetables is actually going to be really easy to be able to obtain in both of the cities all right so now let's go to our favorite topic taxes number five so when it comes to San Diego property taxes, you're gonna be looking at about the same amount when it comes to Valley Center or Escondido. As a lender, you end up using at a 1.25% property tax rating regardless of where the home is. is. So why do we say that? Because technically speaking, you have to make sure that you have enough money for when the taxes are due. Due in November, late in December. Due in March, late in April. So those taxes got to get paid. So when they're included inside your monthly payment, you got to make sure that you don't have a shortage. And that's why we put in that 1.25% of property taxes. But what about Melrose? 
So Melrose is actually located also in Escondido and in Valley Center. So what is Melrose? Melrose is actually those additional assessments of taxes that are added inside of the total property taxes because when the home was originally built, there was nothing there. It was bare land. So you're paying for the um, new streets, you're paying for the school that was built, you're paying for some, sometimes the fire department and things like that. That all goes into those extra special assessments Melrose. So that will increase your total property taxes. When it comes to Valley Center, there are some communities that you will end up actually paying extra taxes. And I'm talking like three to $7,000 additional taxes per year just to live in the communities. That same thing also applies in Escondido. There's also communities that again, you will end up paying Melrose tax, which again is about three to $7,000 in additional taxes. So you're thinking about Eureka Springs, Harmony Grove, areas like that, you're gonna end up paying additional taxes because there was nothing there when they were originally built. So when it comes to sales tax, you're looking at San Diego at 7.8%. National average is at 7.3%. And the income tax is at 9.3%, where the national average is at 4.6%. Again, sign time tax. It's part of that extra that we like to pay here in San Diego and then just in general in California. So just because I said 1.25% is what's common, it's not all the homes. There are some property taxes for some homes that are a little bit lower. So like 1.02% up to that 1.25%. But it's something that you've got to make sure that you can verify, of course, before you set up your property taxes inside of your escrow account to make sure you don't end up with a shortage. Because really in San Diego and in Escondido, depending on those escrow accounts and the property taxes, you will end up possibly in a shortage situation. So what does that mean? So shortage means that if you don't have enough taxes inside of that escrow account, you'll end up getting a new bill, a new letter from your lender about a year later after you own your home saying that, hey, we forgot to put all the taxes inside of your escrow account and that we miscalculated. So therefore they have to add more, which increases your monthly payment. So those are the things that you wanna make sure that you calculate ahead of schedule. Because if you forget, or if the lender forgets and doesn't verify, you have a assessment of $3,600 that is in addition to your regular property taxes, that's $300 a month. So that can really change your budget, really change what you were planning on paying for your home. And then depending on whether you are at the top end of your budget in Escondido or the top end in Valley Center, $300 could make or break you. And remember that that's just the fixing of your taxes. That's not necessarily paying all of the back taxes that the lender has already paid for. It's really important that you double check on how much those taxes are going to be so that way you have the proper amount for your escrow account. All right, amazing people. So today we we're talking about the cost of living when it comes to the housing, the utilities, the food, the property taxes, all of the wonderful stuff. And don't forget, we talked about the weather. It's really important that you know what and all comes into the city that you're looking for, because you could not be around here and you could technically not know that it takes 30 minutes to get from Valley Center <laughs> to Escondido and then probably like 45 minutes just to get to the freeway. Um, so when you're thinking about possibly moving, it's really important that you reach out to us. Give us a call, send us a text or an email, whatever is easiest for you. You definitely want to reach out to us because we got your back when moving to San Diego, especially in Escondido and Valley Center. And don't forget, hey, we release videos every single week on this channel. Make sure that you click that subscribe button and that little bell so you're reminded every single week that we release these videos. Hope you have an amazing day and until next time, see you later.